In this video, we're going to investigate the shapes of oxy acids. So, the example we're going to use is H2SO4. And this would be an it's kind of a nice way to write the formula, but it really tells us nothing about the structure because in reality, the hydrogen is attached to one of the oxygens in the sul on the sulfate ion. So it would be more appropriate when we're looking at geometry to rewrite these as SO2OH2. This is going to tell us that our central atom is sulfur, which has six valence electrons. We have an oxygen, and we actually have two of them which do not contribute any electrons to the central atom and we have two hydroxide groups which each contribute one electron to the central atom. This gives us eight electrons or four pairs. There are four bonding pairs and zero lone pairs. So this means our hybridization is sp3. Our electron domain it's going to equal our molecular geometry and they're both going to be a tetrahedral molecule. So now that we have all this established, we can actually draw out the structure. We have sulfur. It's going to form four bonds, one to an oxygen, another to an oxygen, and two to an OH group. So this is what the octet rule would predict. Sulfur can act also expand its octet or we would have a double bond to oxygen, a single bond to oxygen, and our two hydroxide groups. Since the, the oxygen on the hydroxide group is tied up with that hydrogen bonding, it's not going to be able to expand its octet or form a double bond. So this limits how many double bonds we can put around this molecule. So these are the three complexes that we would have to, to investigate. If we were going to look in the formal charges, the formal charges would predict this structure over here on the right, whereas the octet rule would predict the structure over here on the left. All the oxy acids follow this rule, although there is one exception, and that exception is H3PO3. And we have to write that as POH OH2. And all the other ones will follow the rules of that H2SO4 did, where we can write it as SO2 OH2. So as you're going through and doing Lewis structures and predicting molecular shapes for each of these molecules, Learn to differentiate between the groups, okay? Because we kind of went through and categorized each of these structures based on a group. So learn to differentiate between the groups, recognize the rules that you need to use between the groups, and keep practice the, practicing these and doing practice problems, and you'll quickly become an expert of how to draw a particular shape, identify its electron domain and molecular geometry, determine the hybridization, the number of bonding and lone pairs around the central atom, um, figure out if it's polar or nonpolar, and lastly, figure out the bond angles between all the bonds in a particular molecule. So keep on practicing these and do some problems from the textbook and you'll be good to go with this.